Although we are active church of Satan members, we do not speak their behalf. The following contains language in adult men and poorly impersonated celebrity voices. Listener discretion is advised. This is Magister Bob Johnson. There's nothing better than a broad, a martini, and the devil you know. All right, John, we've made it to double digits. It's episode 10. Yeah. How you doing, man? <laughs> as Adam would say. Yes. And uh, as you can probably hear from my voice, I got over that bad case of gender fluid. It's sounding much better now. So. Oh, yeah. I'm, welcome back. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I do have to say, uh, of course, over the process of moving from one coast to another, I have to say uh, a thank you to you. For all the work you've been doing, uh, just getting keeping oh. the podcast going, and and uh, all the work you put into the editing and stuff, and hey. every now and then somebody hey. says to me, um, "Hey, I like what you did in that part," and I say, "You know what? I didn't do it. That was all John. I was busy <laughs> moving at the time, so it's all good. That's what we do." So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm finally settled on the uh, East Coast. Well, it was good uh, having you here for a while. Uh, it was two yeah. days or whatever, a day and a half. That was a blast. My tattoo is fucking awesome. Thank you. Right on, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, yeah, I'm in uh, Florida now, enjoying life down here. Got to spend some time with the uh, high priest and priestess at Devil's Reign. Lucky. So That was very kick-ass. Yeah. Got a nice inscription in my book. Got to see some really kick-ass art. A yeah. lot of cool art. And so. let me say congratulations on your elevation. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Hell yeah. We're going to change the hey. show to uh, the two warlocks you know. Two warlocks. Maybe help you. Maybe take your order. <laughs> two two warlocks pizza. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. anyway, uh, last week, yeah, we didn't really get to talk very much about anything because, of course, you know, the minute we start, uh, you know, Adam's calling us right away and stuff. Yeah. So, this time, um, we got to address something. Uh, an email. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. One little email. email. Yeah. What a funny little email. Yeah. So um, all I can say is that this moron, his English, his grammar is so bad that the only way that we can really have this read is to kind of polish it up a little bit by having a proper English woman read it. Oh, yeah. And um, we have Penelope right here with us right now. If you would be so kind as to uh, rejoin us. Yeah. email, yeah. Hello everyone, it's Penelope. I'm going to read this email now. In EP2, he says, I'm pretty sure he means episode 2, you made the comment that the COS are the only Satanists. COS are wannabe Satanists. They are nothing but extreme atheists. I do understand why you affiliated with them. It is a safety net. It's the same thing Wiccans do. If you're wrong, and find out God and Satan is real, he should say ah, but his grammar sucks, you can tell God I'm okay because I didn't believe Satan existed. Pagans do the same thing. They claim they practice white magic, make themselves think they are safe, but do call yourselves Satanist and deny the reality of the entity that by name you claim, now he's a rhymer, is just fooling yourself. Real Satanists would never affiliate with them, with the COS. A C A S L. That's Anton Sandor LeVay. Lied about everything in his life. Altered his history just so he could con people. Just like everyone that is a member of the COS. Thank you so much, Penelope. Thank you, Penelope. Well. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, apparently this Man. guy's name is Wayne Johnson, and he's a bit behind. Uh, Are we supposed episode. to say his name? <laughs> hey, man. I guess he put it on the email, so fuck him. <laughs> yeah, he, if, if you if you comment, I mean, it's fair game, right? It's like having a schnitzel in the refrigerator. If it's in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, first, first of all, before you come after us, take some grammar lessons. It's an email. <laughs> it's not a. It's not a tweet. You have more than 144 characters. Take time. Proofread. Spell check. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we can. It's so you know what? Let, the grammar that's another thing, thing that easy. separates and that's us. Just, but yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> that's too easy. But he did say right. in episode two, so he is uh, a, a bit behind on the episode. Way behind, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least he did get to hear Penelope the first time, so uh, <laughs> I guess that works out pretty well. But yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, the first thing that strikes me is hey, you wanted to cut this up a sentence at a time. Sure. You know what? Yeah. It was very rude of me to interrupt you. You continue with your thought. <laughs> well, I, the the first thing that <laughs> it strikes me is just so bizarre to say, um, as like we become Satanists and we become Church of Satan members in order to play it safe with God. <laughs> like, <laughs> how fucking stupid is that? Oh. Like, really? You yeah. think that's you think that's playing it safe with? <laughs> I don't know. That's a. That that's just stupid. I mean, obviously he hasn't uh, studied the tenets of Satanism at all. Yeah. Uh, but and, and certainly, uh, I mean, to to even be an atheist, much less an atheist, uh, is, I can't imagine is going to win over any favors with God. But um, that that's the <laughs> first thing that stands out with me. And then, uh, I mean, of course, naturally, you know, it's easy for for uh, uh, any of these pseudos to come out and say uh that we're all cowards that we want to be yeah. because we don't want to worship an imaginary horned creature i guess i don't I don't know yeah um it's strange that if, you know you're listening to this podcast knowing full well by the you know tags that are on it and the description of it that it is a church of satan related or affiliated uh podcast you know, mm-hmm. by members yeah. of, of the church is what I mean. And you're listening to it, which, hey, thanks. You know, I, I like that. But yeah. um, and thank you for your email, by the way. But uh, this whole <laughs> it, I just don't understand it, you at all. <laughs> I want to cut it up a sentence at a time. Yeah, you break it down, man. All break right. it down. He says in episode two, you made the comment that the COS are the only Satanists. Yes, we yes. did. And yes, that we is do. True. Yeah. COS are wannabe Satanists. That's false. Right. They are nothing but extreme atheists. That may be true. <laughs> In but, some cases, yes. <laughs> we're not nothing but. But anyway, uh, I do understand why you affiliated with them. I don't think that's true. Yeah, obviously you don't understand. <laughs> he says, he goes on and says, it is a safety net. Wrong again. Yeah. I'm gonna have Believe me, there's nothing here. safe about. <laughs> there's nothing safe about this. <laughs> no, uh, it's the same thing Wiccans do. I don't even know what to say about that. Yeah, Wiccans. I mean, what the hell do Wiccans have to do with it? I mean, they're kind of light white, <laughs> white light. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know they're they're no different than Christians are really. I mean, they're, really, they're still yeah. kind of they're wearing that good guy badge. Some of them even use the religion, Christianity and stuff in it. So I don't yeah. know. He says, if you're wrong and find out God and Satan is real, you can tell God, I'm okay because I didn't believe Satan existed. Yeah, but then wouldn't God say, but you also didn't believe I existed? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe God's not you're that logical. You're banished, you extreme atheist. Yeah. <laughs> Pagans do the same thing, claim they practice white magic. Pagan Pagan has a very vague term. Yeah, uh, describes a whole lot of different segments. But and white whatever. magic is just hogwash anyway. Makes yeah. themselves think they are safe, but to call yourselves he, his grand, but to call yourselves Satanist and deny the reality of the entity that by name you claim is just fooling yourself. Let me get this straight really quick for people. That we don't we just because we use the name. It doesn't mean we believe in an entity. So you right. really, really got to read, what is it, the first few pages that, that yeah. you know, of, of any satanic book that, you know, explains you know, that? One of the, th- one of the uh, in the recently, something I saw that Kevin Slaughter had posted was, uh, he said, um, if if that's how your understanding works, then don't. And I'm I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, you know, basically, you're going to be really disappointed when you go to the Elks Lodge and find out that there's no elk within. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it, it's a great uh, point. Like you know, I mean, that's the the whole point is the uh, symbolism, not the uh, you know, just because we say the the name of Satan. I mean, if I say the name of Frodo, doesn't mean that I believe that 
you know, there are hobbits in the forest. <laughs> you know, and just I just like the movie. <laughs> All right. Good luck with the ring. And uh, let me see. We have just some of the last thing here. Real Satanists would never affiliate with the Church of Satan. Uh, wrong again. Just, of course. Just FYI. I mean, that was not, I mean, and you actually did respond to his email, you know, in case you didn't know this, um, you know, nobody had this codified before Anton LeMay. It was, it didn't exist. Right. So, I mean, you know, how, how can you come after him and say what comes after him is real? You yeah, know, if he, I, he's the one that claimed it, then. I, uh, I didn't want to blast him or flame him, you know, or anything like that. I, I, I tend to. First, always try to clear up any misconceptions. In the, yeah, uh, yeah, you're you're far more can. you're far more polite in the email than I I probably would have been, but <laughs> you got more be. professional. Yeah. yeah, at least in the first one, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I think we've dragged that out long enough. Gave that guy a little uh, too much yeah, time as it is. Good, so. good luck, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Johnson. Wait, is that? Oh no, I was thinking of The Rock. It's Dwayne Johnson. Sorry, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, wait a minute. This was a whole different paint job on things. <laughs> the Rock. <laughs> we should have read it in a Hawaiian voice. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Let's move right. on with the show, shall we? Cool. Yeah. All right, so John, I think it's time. A lot of people have been, you know, listening to the story about. Adam Cannibal and oh, Chris yeah. Walken. I think it's time we resolve this shit. So yeah, I think uh, you know we should find out what Chris's side is. What do you think? Yeah, let's call him and find out if he listened to uh, the podcast and uh, right, what right. he thinks about that. And um, yeah, yeah. Hold on, let me call him. Hello, gentlemen. It's it's great to hear from you again. Hey, Chris. How's it going? It's going. I'm enjoying some some pineapple. <laughs> excellent, <laughs> excellent. Um, You've enjoyed that pineapple a long time, haven't yeah, you? Man. Pineapple is one of my favorite drinks. It's it's good for the health. <laughs> Makes you <Yeah>. virile. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. So we were wondering if you had a chance to listen to uh, last week's podcast. It's sad. The whole story. I felt bad. The little bastard doesn't have a father, and he thinks that I'm his dad. And I've had a lot of bastards in my life, but he's not mine. No. Huh. Oh. Um. I mean, he he feels pretty sure. He, he I mean, gave a pretty compelling, uh, you know, backstory on all that. So, do you mind if we give him a call and uh, get him on here, and we could maybe all talk together and kind of kind of button this up and see what see what's doing. Yeah, I think I think that'd be good. Um, I just want to say that his mom was great in the sack. Okay. <laughs> good thing you said it before he got on. So I know I didn't want to insult him. He seems a little hurt. Notice the sabotage of of my learning this wonderful thing you guys have called Satanism. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll give him a call right now. Just- Hello. Hey, Adam. What's up, man? John. John. Hey, how's it going? going good, on? good. We uh, we were hoping um, we could talk to you a bit. We we have uh, we have Chris on the line with us, and um, oh. if you don't mind, um, would you would you mind talking all together? Yeah, sure. Uh, I I guess yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. He uh, we we talked to him a little bit about the podcast last week, and um, oh. he said he heard of, yeah. he heard it, but he. He's under the impression that he is not your father. So yeah, why don't course. you why don't you guys talk a little bit amongst yourselves? Now, Adam, I understand. You're hostile. You're mad. You believe that I'm your father, and I'm sorry that you're a bastard. You never knew your dad, but I'm not your dad. You're not my bastard. I'm sorry to tell you. You know, I long- I grew up in an environment where. Other boys would have their dads take them camping, and they had their dads teach them how to carve wood, and my dad was off making pulp fucking fiction. So, I'm a little, I'm a little upset about this. 
I think maybe if you played some competitive sports, you might have empowered yourself a little more. I didn't have a dad either, which is sad too, but something happened to me, Mr. Campbell. I want to clarify to make sure that you understand that you're not my bastard. I was you do admit zoo. that you met my mom, right? Yeah, she's great. All right, all right. You don't need to go into details now. It's, <laughs> I'm just, you, you met her, you, you, you did some dirty, dirty things, and I am here. Yes, so. yes, we did. We did terrible things to each other. It was great. <laughs> you don't I'm, happen I'm, to have her. You don't happen to have her phone number, do you? All right, look, look, you bastard. <laughs> I don't, I don't really appreciate where you're going with this. All right, so you, you just admitted that you were with my mom. So here I am, nine months after that. And what do you have to say for yourself? Simmer down, pot roast. <laughs> I'm trying to explain the reasons that it's happened. Cool your jets, turbo. <laughs> I was at the zoo <laughs> way before I went to O'Hare. Okay? I was you were, attacked. What? I was attacked at the zoo by marsupials because they're fast. I was unaware. <laughs> they robbed me my manhood. Oh, fuck. I'm pouring my heart out till you hear, exposing myself. It's bad. I don't have the equipment to fight the children. That's why I hate marsupials. The bastards have robbed me of what I have. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that damn. you grew up as a bastard, oh my but you're not my bastard. <laughs> my fucking world is spinning here. I'm so sorry. I had no idea that that. Oh my god! I have so I have so many fucking questions. Chris, just, is too. this true? Did what, you really have a, like what marsupial a, a, was? It? Incident? It's it's very painful to discuss. It's a reason for my odd behavior sometimes. Oh goddamn! I'm so sorry. I I had no idea, but this means oh fuck. That means that you, there's some guy that's really your dad. It's it's not me, and you've been sabotaging me. You have to you have to make it right. You have to do the right thing here. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm I'm sorry about everything. As when I first heard you on the the show, I just because of the way that you were framed to me since I was a child. I just I I made some wild assumptions based on what my my mom's. I, I'm sorry. I fuck. I'm so goddamn embarrassed. I look if if you need. You're step. embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I have my manhood robbed by marsupials. <laughs> that's, that's horrible. I'm, I don't. I don't really know what to say. I'm. I'm sorry. Gentlemen, I'm sorry. If I if I may interject, I, there, nobody needs to be embarrassed. Nobody needs to be you know too too apologetic. It, these sort of things happen, and um, it, it's better that that uh, we know. The, the truth and um, you can yeah. move on from there you know and, and uh, I have one last I, thing I'd like to say to yeah. Mr. Campbell oh, by all means because of what has happened to you I think it's made you a powerful Satanist I think it's given you the, the strength to continue on with no dad it's amazing Yow, you've, you've got the moves <laughs> stick with it thank you thank you Christopher um if I can call you Christopher, uh, no, I prefer I, you call me Mr. Walken. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Walken. I I appreciate that. Look, maybe we could um, together form a campaign, uh, a, a GoFundMe, or some form of a fundraiser to to help a Satanist stalk Satanic owls, and then maybe <laughs> in that endeavor we can find a sense of unity of purpose. Sounds weird. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Call me Chris. <laughs> okay, Chris. I, I think we should do that. And everyone listening, if you believe that I Satanist should stalk Satanic Owls as well, look for I Satanist on Facebook and www.isatanist.com and let them know that we demand owls so that we can come together. As Satanists, we always should. And fight marsupials. 
Fuck the marsupials! Fuck marsupials. Your passion is, is understandable. It's good. I have some things to attend to, gentlemen. It's been great. Adam, I'm sorry. No, it's... Don't be. It's entirely on me. I, I'm owning it. Thank you for being so good as to give me some of your time to explain your position. And I think together we can really do something great for Satanists everywhere through the I Satanist Owl movement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> hey, um, you have your mom's telephone number by any chance. Motherfucker. All right, so for episode 10, now that we're in the double digits, we need Woo! double the sinist guest. Yes. <laughs> so who we got this week, John? We've got Warlock of the Church of Satan, Zoth Amog. Welcome, sir. Hey, what's going up? Hey, what's up, yeah. fellas? What's going up? Yep. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Not <going> us. Up. <laughs> uh, of course we are. We're all going up. That's right. To heaven. How are you? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, Magistrate in Dream said if you don't down. listen to the show, you're going to heaven. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you been up to? Uh, same old shit as always, man. You know, working hard and, you know, living life to the fullest. What's up with you guys? How you guys doing? Yes. Hey, we're asking the fucking questions here. So, oh, all right. Well, no. <laughs> no. John, be polite. I mean, <laughs> no, I hear you. I'm fucking with you. Um, <laughs> you know me. Anyway, no, we're good, man. I'm good. How are you, Dorian? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Everything's good. Can't be. I'm can't well. come. Oh. Nice. Great. So Great. <laughs> we heard it through the grapevine. It's a pretty big damn grapevine that you are. What is it? The the head editor? Is that what it is? Or head? Or just editor? What is it? Of old oh, Nick magazine. Oh, managing editor. Managing editor. Managing I guess, editor. I guess that's the head. You know, the the top <laughs> of the echelon. Nice. Get the head of no. old Nick magazine. Yeah, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm under the CEO. Of course, which is Bob Johnson. So yeah, I'm like his right hand man. If you want to just make it simple, perfect. So why don't you? And he was just on here. A, yeah, a day in the life of uh, doing stuff like that. What uh, what's that like? Oh boy, it's great. It's great. I love it. You know, I get to uh, preview a lot of the uh, photos. That we get to um, feature in the That's magazine. A tough, tough job there. Now, do you do <laughs> yeah, that, do you do that alone in the times. bathroom or, or what? Uh, no, no, usually on my laptop, you know, just, nice. just checking them out. <laughs> uh, you know, I get to scout out different uh, potential models, uh, always, you know, handing out cards, talking to people. Oh. Um, Another job, like, damn. Promote. Yeah, you know, promote at events. That's always um, interesting to do. Throw up the banner, bring some magazines, meet and greet people. Like concerts? What kind of events uh, do, you, do you promote at? No, more like, you know, like fetish clubs kind of things, you know. Oh, gotcha. Just, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Oh, there's music. There's, you know, live entertainment. Usually somebody getting whipped yeah. or spanked or something like that. Great. Uh, nice. You know, and, you know, sometimes in these type of events, you'll have certain vendors, you know, either people who sell like leather stuff or you know just uh, erotic yeah. items of nature and uh you know so we'll bring some magazines we, we get invited to come down and i represent nice. awesome. is that a time for scouting also yeah of course it's I, i'm always on the prowl so you know that's that's just always happening yeah. especially at one of these type of events you know mm. yeah and, it certainly uh, seems like they would be more open-minded to it probably at those kind of events yeah, of course, you know, but you know, you gotta you gotta use discretion as well because uh, I, you know, from experience, the club lighting isn't always photography lighting, <laughs> and uh, you know, you'll meet somebody in a club and you'll be like, oh, it'll be great in the magazine. Here's my card. Send me some pictures, and you see the pictures, and you're like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. <laughs> Is that the same person? I don't know. Uh, we always thought that about strip clubs, like you know, you know, if you turn the house lights on, they just scatter like cockroaches. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, exactly. It, it looks, you know, it looks different. You know, that's all I gotta say. The skin looks a little different. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and then I'm always on social media, you know, promoting on all the various uh, social media networks out there: Facebook, Twitter, fucking Pinterest, and, and I don't know what ever, uh, you know, Lo and and the website, of course. You know, I update the website. 
Um, so yeah, there's a there's a lot to do as managing editor, you know. Yeah. Besides, uh, you know, regularly meeting with uh, Magister Bob Johnson and discussing the future of Old Nick Magazine. Uh, I'm going to yeah. see him with a cigar and some whiskey, from- right? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, that's that's mandatory. Those are necessities. You know, you got to have the whiskey, you got to have the, the cigars, the tools of the trade, right? Yeah. Well, you know, those those are implements to help us brainstorm. You know, once once yeah, you have absolutely the head in front of you, then you are free to let the thoughts flow, and uh, <laughs> you know, it, it usually works out that way. Right on. Okay, so yeah. pretty much in a, in, a, in a nutshell, you've got the coolest fucking job in the world. That's great, dude. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Can't awesome, man. That's really cool. No doubt. Well, I I, I know we kind of we kind of touched on this with uh with Bob a little bit, but uh I mean did did you have anything special going on uh the anniversary coming up for old Nick? Oh yeah, we've been discussing that a lot lately. Um, you know, this coming April will be the 10th year anniversary of Old Nick magazine which also coincides yeah. with the 50th anniversary of the Church of Satan, which also coincides yeah. with the release of Magister Bob Johnson's book, The Satanic Warlock. Yeah! So we, oh, we yeah. Busy brainstorming, you know, all kinds of, you know, ideas on how we can, you know, monopolize on this big, big date coming up. Uh, don't want to reveal too be. much. Don't want to reveal too much, but, you know, that just yeah. know that, that we're definitely thinking about what we're going to do. And once it, it happens, everyone's going to be blown the fuck away. Oh, I can't nice. wait. I can't nice, wait to be yeah. blown away. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what we do, you know, try awesome. to blow people's minds. Awesome. Right on, man. So let's go back. Let's go back to little Zoth uh, running around. Um, what was, uh, what was your family like? Uh, were they religious? How, how was that? Live, you know, growing up. Um, fuck, man. Uh, you know, I I had a kind of normal childhood, I guess, if you want to call it that. Uh, that yeah, I know, right? It's it's such a weird thing to say, but um, yeah, you know, it, it wasn't much different than any other person's childhood. I was forced to go to church and go to fucking Sunday school and do my fucking first communion and I hated that shit. I used to, I remember sitting there in class and fucking drawing like Iron Maiden album covers, you know, in my notebook <laughs> while this <laughs> Yeah, you know, like while this idiot's, you know, trying to have me memorize some dumb prayer that I didn't care about. You know, but, um, you know, fortunately, my mom was like cool with it. She was like, you know, if you really don't want to go, you don't have to go. You know, we're just doing this for your grandmother because she was like a Sunday school teacher at the time. And, you know, was pressing my mother to have me go because it didn't make her look good with the rest of right. her, freaking, you know, peers that her grandson was one of the Sunday school services or whatever. So I was like, all right, mom, I'll do it. And then once I did it, I was just like, I really don't want to go back. And she's like, you don't have to go back. You, you, you know, you did it. And that's cool. So, you know, from that point on, I just um, I just started uh, exploring all different kinds of, you know, religious um, uh, books, really. You know, I, I really uh, was interested in the occult from an early on age. I mean, uh, I always liked fiction and fantasy and science fiction. So that, mm. that, that always was like a, a big part of, of my childhood. And occult and mythology always had that in it you know i always liked the the greek mythology growing up you know i always found that very interesting and then the north uh north mythology afterwards and you know i start um looking into uh like uh haitian voodoo and um uh like necron sorry yeah you know then i picked up uh hp lovecraft and the necronomicon and you know there was a whole pantheon of of demons and gods and i was just like wow this is just intense shit you know (laughs) and then uh yeah you know when i got into high school like uh freshman year of high school i I met a a kid he worked in a bookstore and um i had asked him i was like do you have the satanic bible you know at, at your store yeah. And he was like, yeah, I think we do, you know, and, and, you know, this was something that I had heard about, but I hadn't read yet. You know, I was, I was young at the time. I think it was like 13 or something like that. Oh, and, um, you know, sure enough, the next day 
he comes into school and he you know he goes into his jacket and he goes i fucking stole this from work here it's for you <laughs> <laughs> i was like holy shit you know uh. and got it you know and i read through it and i was you know from that point on i i identified with everything in the book i was just like yeah you know this is this is what I want to be, you know. This is what I am. This is a, a reflection of who I am, you know. And um, did you did you immediately send some money then to the uh, Black House to? Uh, make um, a actually, <laughs> no, no, no. You know, I actually waited till I was I was an adult. I um, you know, continued. Well, I my, meant for the stolen book. No, no, not at all. That that so was technically on, you still owe for that book. Nah, I didn't steal it. <laughs> oh, okay. So he worked there. He used a finger discount. You know that that is a fair point. That is a fair point. Yeah. He cried he out, to relieved it to of it. It, too. Was a, it was a gift unto me. So, however he got it is on him. All right, where's he at now? I'll go talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even remember his name if I wanted to. He <laughs> was one of my skater friends from the day. You know, we there was like a whole group of us. We used to all skate together, and he was one of the kids I used to skate with, Come and. On. um uh yeah you know from that point on you know i i always um i always went back to that book you know like i always kept on reading more occult and you know i, I was lucky enough to grow up in new york city at a time where we had this um this bookstore called magical child actually not not a bookstore it was like an occult store yeah. and i could go in there and i could read through all different you know authors on on occult mysticism you know and all kinds of weird you know um topics and um you know, they, they always seemed like bullshit to me after having read the Satanic Bible, you know? It's like, it was it was a nice form of entertainment, you know? Much like reading yeah. Lovecraft, you know, where it's like you can kind of get into the story for a while and be like, wow, this is fascinating. But once you're done with the book, you're just kind of like, all right, whatever, just yeah, another piece. Dick. Yeah. yeah, you know? Meanwhile, the Satanic Bible was just like a concrete philosophy, you know? Very, very different from the other books. Even though they all kind of were put in the same category, you know, <clears throat> right. but, uh, very different, you know. So I, I read through a lot of different books in, in the years, and I, you know, I still uh, look around every once in a while at, at in the bookstores at the different occult books that are out there. But it's like it's it's not the same, you know. You you can't compare. No. I think I had that same like that was kind of my fascination too was that. Everything occult seemed more interesting until I read the Satanic Bible. And then after that, I actually put the Satanic Bible on the shelf for about a year. But everything I would read, I was like, yeah, you know, it just became bland all of a sudden. It became silly all after that, you know. So. Exactly. Yeah, it's well, like, because, it's like, you know, the doctor shed some light on it. Um, yeah. And, he, you know, he kind of let you know right there how bullshit it was. And, uh, Plus, he was yeah, able yeah. to still appeal to that, to our, our dark nature and to that um, mystical side that we loved, and yet, you know, just take away all the, the fanatical bullshit, basically. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. ultimately, what, what I found most important from reading the Satanic Bible was that, you know, all gods are man-made, you know? And there, yeah. there is no supernatural, there is no nothing. And then when you, when you really accept that and rationalize that as being truth, then every sort of mythology that you look at is is just is just nonsense because they all ultimately bow down and and before a fictitious being, you know? Yeah. No matter how dark or benevolent they want it to be. It's just kinda like, you know, you're bowing down to a higher power and that's just bullshit, you know? Mm -hmm. And Satanism are the, the, the highest. Yeah. So that always stuck with me. That always was like something deep embedded within my personal psyche. And it was just like, yeah, you know, that this this is the path for me. This is the way I am. This is what the way I always will be. Yeah. So, you know, you technically, know, technically the, uh, when they're bowing down to uh, that supposed god or, or goddess or whatever, they're actually, like, like Anton said, uh, bowing down to, and, and worshiping the, the man that created that god by proxy. Right, exactly. You know, and you know, even you know, as as dark and and mystical as you know, like books like the Necronomicon may seem, you know, it's like they're ultimately doing the same thing. They're kind of like you know, bowing down to this, you know, this this fictitious character, you know. And it's right. like, yeah, 
all right, you know, I, I like the whole Cthulhu mythos, but I'm not going to necessarily get on my knees and pray to some, you know, space alien monster thing, you know? Right. <laughs> but you'll drink from an octopus mug. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, it's, it's just kind of cool. I like I like the stories, you know? I like <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Hell yeah. Awesome. So well, how old were you when you uh, finally joined? Mm, uh, I think I was 21. Oh, yeah. Okay. Was that was that a vape break there? Uh, no, I was actually taking <laughs> a sip of my whiskey. I, I'll take a vape break now. Tell me if you can hear this. I, I, I'm always kind of paranoid that you're going to hear this machine going off. Hold on. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you guys vape at all? Slowly. Very, very. Uh, no, we don't vape. But uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I haven't smoked for over a year. Cigarettes, that is. I've just been vaping lately. It, you know. Yeah. Hey, whatever you do, man. I'm waiting you know, to see what happens first with them. You know, when people start dropping like flies or getting sick or something, then I'll, I'll <laughs> not to do it. But if you know, yeah. five, six years go by, maybe I'll uh, you know give it a little whirl. You know? I still like cigars <laughs> myself, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I quit. Uh, I quit smoking four years ago, and I I smoked a pack a day for like twenty three years, and. So oh I'm, wow! I, yeah. I don't think I can do the a little bit of this or a little bit of that though. Like for me, I I either have to just stop or or keep going. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a pack a day is a serious smoker. I, I was never that serious a smoker. I maybe did like two packs a week. You know. Oh damn! But, uh, um, That's yeah, control you know, actually. That's pretty good control there. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's it's habitual more than you know addiction kind of thing. It's just kind of like recreational smoking. So. I think gotcha. this is uh, a little cleaner. Uh, yeah, like John said, you know, yeah. we'll see in a couple of years <laughs> what happens. Yeah. I might what's be like, what's, oh, what's not go. killing us? I mean, shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Really, you know, it's 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 indulgence. ISIS, ISIS is not is. killing us. Yeah. <laughs> us Life beating us. Is three. killing me. <laughs> That's funny. So, uh, you play an instrument. I heard. Is that true? Um, I play many instruments, actually. Ooh, tell us about that. Yeah, um, I've always been interested in music. Um, when I was a young teenager, I started playing bass in bands, and then I uh, studied music in college, and you know, expanded my musical knowledge. I learned to play guitar. I learned to play drums. I learned to play piano. I took voice lessons, I studied uh, music theory, I studied studio engineering. I pretty much delved into everything musical that I could get out of school, you know. And um, mm. you know, from that, I, I've, I've been able to, you know, use that knowledge in the various bands that I've been in um, over the past years. Um, primarily always as a bass player or a vocalist. Um, that's, that's just my natural instrument for me. You know, nice. uh, I, I, I feel I'm more of a rhythm musician than a yeah. lead musician. You know, there's this yeah. kind of two different avenues there. You so can you be resonate, like, you resonate more with the lower frequencies. Yeah, I resonate yeah. with the lower frequencies. I, I guess um, I'm, I'm more of a rhythmic kind of person. You know, I like the drums. Mm. I like the bass. Uh, that's, cool. that's what I like. You know, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, do the bounce kind of thing yeah you know exactly yeah. plus awesome. for me music vibrates when it's got a good groove when it's got a rhythm when it's you know not like primarily something you can dance to but you know like something you can nod your head to you know something that sure. has got flow. you know yeah. I, I appreciate the more technical aspects of music i certainly you know uh being a fan of like death metal music you know i can like enjoy technicality to its extremest form but you know, if the song doesn't have a good rhythm to it, if it doesn't flow steadily, I just uh, I dismiss it. I'm like, uh, I can't even listen to this. Yeah. So, what are some of your influences and, and favorite bands? Oh fuck, man. Jeez, I, I have a very I never heard of them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I have a wide range of bands I like. I mean, yeah. it you know it really all depends <clears throat> on my mood. I'm sure you know you guys are probably the same way. Yeah. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if if I'm driving the car and I want to get somewhere really fast, I'll throw on some fucking Pantera, you know. Yeah. If I want to relax, I'll listen to some classical music, you know. I've been listening to a lot of, like, Sinatra lately, a lot of flamenco guitar. 
Um, I like a lot nice. of the classics, you know, like Black Sabbath and, and, and you know, stuff from the 70s. Um, I love Typo Negative. Um, shit, nice. man. I've been to uh, uh, what's that band? Uh, God Flesh Apocalypse lately a lot. They're fucking brutal as hell. Um, I love <laughs> Black Dahlia Murder. You know, I mean, you know, it's it's all over the place. I mean, it's all basically metal, you know, with the yeah. exception of yeah. classical. But I think Blue metal voice. has a lot of roots in classical, you know, Absolutely. especially yeah. with the orchestrations and the harmonies and, and everything like that. So, yeah. you know, it all kind of flows from there. But, um, yeah, you know, it depends on my mood, you know. Uh, some days, you know, you, you'll find me just like in the living room listening to classical and then the next day i'll be you know blasting 80s metal and you know it's it all depends you know it, it's it's yeah, kind of a yeah. we're all we're all musicians uh, all three of us here so i mean we can relate definitely i'm when dorian yeah. was here he was tattooing and he was like john can you throw on i like to move it move it and i thought it was weird but yeah. i'm like hey if that's what you want to hear that's the mood you're in we're, we'll play hey you on. were the one that was acting like vanilla ice the whole night so rapper boy but uh you did mention uh you did mention death metal earlier and and uh, yeah. as we as we record uh today is the uh the death anniversary of uh chuck sheldner by the way yes oh. yes i actually um I saw my um, not to bring up social media, but I saw in my in my Facebook memories, you know, that uh, yeah. today was today was his death. I had made a death announcement years ago, and I just I just remembered it. I was just like, oh shit, man! That was a very influential band for me, man. As a matter yeah. of fact, the first concert I ever went to was Death Spiritual really? Healing. Yeah, it fucking blew my mind away, and I watched those guys up on stage, and I thought to myself. That's what I want to do. It was at Lemoore's yeah. in Brooklyn. And then I remembered um, years later being in a band, going and performing on that stage and thinking to myself, fuck yeah, you know, yeah. I, this is what yeah. I wanted to do. I was there looking down in the audience and having people look up at me and being like, yeah, this, this is what I was thinking about years ago, you know? <laughs> Sweet. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw him on the Pest, or uh, no, uh, with Pestilence on the Human Tour. So, yeah, yeah. that was a no, great, I got to great musician, that. man. Spiritual healing tour, man. They had James Murphy on leads, man. That guy's amazing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. crazy. That was a great lineup, great album. I still, I still think that it, that's probably. I mean, I don't know. A lot of people may disagree or, or or agree with me, but um, I think that album, Spiritual Healing, is a very satanic album, in a sense that a lot of the themes, um, in the songs are are in line with satanic philosophy. Never once yeah. he mentioned the word Satan as a deity, but right, just right. just lyrically, the, how strong and and the message that comes across in a lot of the songs, it's fucking satanic, man. Even the fucking album yeah. cover, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> definitely great album cover. It's like shit. That that's that's one of those that you gotta really like listen to it and and read the lyrics and be like, yeah, this is this is some good shit right here. Uh, yeah, and musically advanced too for the time. You know, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, really. I mean, death in general. They, they, they spawned an entire genre of music. You know, so. Yeah, you know. and at the time death, when that music was coming, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, but it was kind of like you know along the lines of like what became technical death metal. You know, because they were dealing oh, yeah. with a lot of like odd time signatures and yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, and that continued on. Came, even Gene you know, Hoagland played drums in that band for a while. So yeah, there was. Yeah, Definitely. you know, there's, there's, there's a music. lot of like a lot of progressive stuff going on on that album, and with that band in particular, you know, that kind of just spawned a whole subgenre afterwards. Yep, yeah, yeah. it's a shame that guy died. Yeah, damn, you that guys are talking be. about all these uh, <laughs> bands I have no clue about. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know death. Ah, no, I on. really don't. I was like it's growing up, you know, it's I was totally time. yeah, but I was into like. Progressive Ice Cube. metal, no, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> like progressive metal, like uh, Dream Theater and Queensrÿche, and and like that's just cool. That's cool. the technically proficient type of music. You know, I like oh, loved it. Yeah, see, for me, like when when I was young, I always sought something heavier. You know, yeah. that was just yeah. kind of yeah. like the shin I was on. I, I once I heard something heavy, I never went yeah. back. You know, I kind of kept on going forward. It wasn't until I got much older, 
like when I was in college and really studying music that I actually went back and and looked where everything originated from. But as yeah. I as I was growing, uh, you know, from my teenage years to my early twenties, I always sought something heavier, something heavier. You know, I, I I started off listening to like Black Sabbath and Kiss as a little kid, like you know, seven, eight years old, whatever. And then from there, you know, I started listening to like Judas Priest and Iron Maiden, you know. And then I heard like Metallica, and then I heard Venom, and I heard Slayer, yeah. and I heard Celtic yeah. Frost, and it was just like it was like steam just kept going, yeah, 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 Morbid Angel. And, and deicide and obituary and it just kept on going you know heavier and faster and darker and uh, you know i that that was just the the path i kept on you know walking so it was just kind of like for me to to hear these these kind of bands you know it was just like this this mission that i'm always on you know i was always yeah. looking for the, the yeah, next I mean, as i as i aged um i you know i started getting into heavier things you know lamb of god and throw down and uh you know, five figure death punch and stuff like that. But like, I would, I would start getting a little into some harder stuff, but I never really liked any of the stuff that, uh, if the music wasn't there, like you were saying, you're into the rhythm. If that's how I am, if, if as long as the rhythm is really cool, I kind of don't care what the guy is saying, even though sometimes I can't understand what he's saying. Um, right. I mean, he could be like, or all he wants, but as long as, as long as that fits the mood of the song, but like you get like these bands out there that are like right now, like a band called ghosts or something. Everyone's like, Oh yeah. And the music might be there. But then he starts, you know, you hear his voice and it sounds like a 13-year-old girl. It's kind of weird for me. Yeah, I can't get into that band, you know. Yeah. I, 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 I got to say I really tried. I listened to the first album, listened to yeah. the second album. I was just like, uh, I can't. I don't, I don't just, see what the deal is. Yeah, It's like a bad soup. You know, it's missing something. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, a well, lot of people are going to get me for that, but, you know, I just I can't get into them. I don't know. It's, it's not. Well, why would anybody... You just, everyone can have an opinion. I mean, you don't get mad at somebody for having an opinion. That's that's just retarded. I just, I just, you know, I just can't get into it. I don't know. I, I'm actually a big fan of Guar. You know. Yeah. And to Guar is like the ultimate shock rock stage, you know, visual kind of band. And then when I see a band like Ghost, they have all these visuals, but then musically they're lacking, and yeah. that kind of pisses me off. You know, it yep. seems almost like a gimmick. You know. <laughs> and that that's why I get angry because like, you know, well, when you look at a band like War, they have like all these fucking props and all this elaborate costumes, but the musicians are amazing. Right. These guys don't fuck around. Their leads are on point. Their rhythms kick ass. The drummer is wailing every fucking song, you know? The lyrics <laughs> brutal, you know, they don't they give all hundred ten percent every freaking song, you know? And then right. I you know, I see these other bands that rely on like this 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 gimmick you know and i'm like but you're, you're lacking something you're lacking the music you guys look cool in your photos you know but <laughs> give me something more you know I, I i don't i don't care about putting a poster in my room i care about the music <laughs> right exactly oh fuck. you know what man i discovered this band the other day i'm like i said before i'm always looking for like new shit to listen to or whatever yeah. and i was um you know just scrolling through my my uh youtube news feed and shit and i um <clears throat> I came across this band called Brimstone Coven. They're very much like Black Sabbath. I don't know if you hmm. like Black Sabbath, yeah, you know. Yeah. But um, it was cool, you know. It was cool. It was different. It had this, you know, throwback 70s feel, but it was still kind of like up to date enough to be relevant. And, I was going to uh, say, isn't Ghost kind of one of those bands? Yeah, but we, you know, we were just agreeing that they don't really musically do it, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, yeah, this band, you know, they, they kind of had that. They, they kind of had that nice feel to it. Um, besides that, I don't know. I heard um, New Cradle of Filth sounds good. Um, what is it? Hammer of Witches. That was yeah. pretty good. It's, it's kind of like uh, reflecting back on the older material that they used to do. I don't know if you're a fan of that, that sound, you know? Oh, yeah. No, I like Cradle of Filth. They're cool. Yeah. I mean, vocally, some people dark get... Angels, you know, dark Angels, Dark Angels, get me thy light. <laughs> some people get irritated by his voice. Some people like it. So yeah. it's, it's kind of a, a taste kind of thing. Um, I always recommend the Black Dahlia Murder. That's got to be like one of my favorite bands. I, I listen to them like all the time when I'm cool. driving my car. They're just so high adrenaline, fucking kick-ass band. <laughs> nice. um, and, and like every album that they put out, better than the last one. You know, so yeah. if you just like through their through their discography, 
you know, you'll hear the first one pretty cool, second one even better, third one better than that one, and it just gets better and better. I think they're like up to like six or seven now. I forget. Awesome. I it sounds like us guy. with our episodes. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. number 10, we're getting even better now. That's right. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Very Zoth, cool. I, I remember uh, years ago you were on that uh, TV show. Uh, was it Obscurities? Is that what the name of the, or was it the name of the store? Oddities, Oddities, the Oddities, store Oddities. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I, I, I'm not sure, but if I remember right, I think they introduced you on the show as a musician. Were you playing yeah. with somebody in at the time, or? Um. No, at at that particular time, I was not playing with anybody at that time. But I had mentioned that I was working on a a solo album. I, oh, okay. I basically had to come up with some shit on the spot, you know. Yeah. And I was like, yes, I'm working on a orchestral black metal album, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the chick from the store was like, yeah, that's really cool. And I was like, yeah, cool, you know. But it was <laughs> it was <laughs> it, it was kind of like an ad lib kind of thing. I mean. Of course, if I had my choice and I had the free time to do it, I would definitely do it. But um, yeah, besides it being an idea and having written a few songs just like on paper, you know, because I, I write everything down on paper. I'm, I'm kind of like old school like that. When, yeah. when I write music, I just kind of pull out a piece of paper. And, you know, that goes back to like, you know, my college years where I was studying music. I just kind of write everything down and notes yeah. so I, I did have a lot of ideas at the time and it was something that i was looking into doing but um it, it didn't really go past that maybe i'll go i'll go back to it one of these days when i have more time more free time nice. but you know I'm, I'm so busy all the time with old nick you know and yeah, helping yeah. up my wife with her business that uh it, it just i i i don't know I, I need to figure out how to get more free time and to work on some more music yeah, now, how'd you get involved all... with uh how'd you get involved with old Nick? Um, you know what? Um Marilyn actually in, had introduced me to Bob. She helped um promote the magazine at some event in uh California. She flew down to California. She was uh featured in the magazine in the uh in issue and um you know, Bob, knowing that she was a satanic witch and, you know, invited her down and said, you know, would, would you like to, you know, help me promote? It would be cool if you were there. You could, you know, sign magazines or whatever. And she was like, yeah, cool, you know. So when she, you know, met him face to face, she mentioned to him that I, you know, know how to, like, update websites and I'm good with graphic design and, you know, doing all that kind of things that he should reach out to me because I think maybe... If I recall, the conversation had gone, you know, in a direction where he was saying that he needs help with his website or something like that, to that nature. So, you know, that, you know, instantly we connected and the rest was history. Nice. What about Marilyn? How did you guys meet? Oh, wow. Uh, me and Marilyn. That's that's a long story. Um, Marilyn used to work in this, like, um, this gothic boutique sort of a uh, clothing store slash jewelry store in the hot village topic? No, i'm kidding no no, no. <laughs> before hot topic even up yeah, here yeah, yeah. you know this <laughs> yeah, was like yeah. back in the 90s you know when the vampire goth culture was very popular in new york city and there was a lot of goth kids walking around you know like trying to look like marilyn manson or whatever <laughs> um you know there was one of these stores she used to work in there and i used to just go in there all the time just to talk to her, you know, oh. and um, yeah, you know, like we hit it off really, you know, really from the beginning, and um, <clears throat> that was like my only way of contacting her, you know, was going into the store, and then she had quit the job, and I didn't see her for years, you know, oh, wow. I thought about her, I was just like, oh man, you know, that, that girl, that girl I used to work there, you know, and then like years later, like, you know, we bumped into each other, and we just like picked up right, right where we left off, and you know, we've been together ever since. Wow, that's so nice, cool. man. Yeah. How how fortunate to to hit, see her again, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course. It was like one of those things, like you know, like almost like uh, meant to be. You know, I was yeah. just like, here, here, here she is again. You know, and I was just like, I, I can't let her go this time. This time, I made sure I got a phone number. You know, <laughs> and like yeah. things like that. I was just like, 
that I try to invite her out on a date once in a while, you know, but it's, you know, not, not trying to seem too creepy. <laughs> um, you know, when, when we met up years yeah. later, we were a little older, a little more, you know, a little more uh, mature. So um, I, I was able to, to take off from that point. Awesome. Right on. So uh, what about the future? What's the future for Zoth? The future for Zoth. Um, have any plans? As of right now, any, uh... World domination. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to continue doing what I do. I, I enjoy working with Old Nick Magazine. I, I see a big potential future there with, with what we do, with what we want to do. I'm, I'm going to continue, you know, um, putting as much energy as I can in, into that company because I feel it has a lot of potential to go very far in this world. I also enjoy very much being a part of um, my wife, Marilyn Mansfield's company, what she does. I, you know, believe in her 100% and everything that she does. And I, I put a lot of energy into helping her be as creative and artistic as possible and as successful as possible with her company. So there's a lot of that um, that, that cool. I see in my future. Sweet. And then, you know, just what I do, man. Uh, I'm a dad. I'm a family man, you know. I, I spend a lot of my time, you know, just raising my kids and, and trying to be, you know, the best father that I can. So, you know, maybe in my future it's just um, – uh, a lot of what I do right now, but you know, and on, on the next level up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sweet. I know, man. Well, Zoth, we ask this question of all our guests: What does Satan mean to you? Satan means to me. Um, it is to me. Satan is myself. Satan is the character in mythology that has always been the rebel the the one who questions things the the one who stands as the one huh, let me see how i can phrase this better it is it is the adversary of the sort of dictatorship that rules over um an individual's life um, to me, Satan is more of like an idea rather than a person or a, a being, you know, right. yeah. it's, it is kind of like, um, it's like dark matter of the universe. You know, you can't really <laughs> pinpoint, you can't really like say like it is, it's absolutely this or that. It's kind of more of like a, a, um, a different point of view. You know, yeah. it's yeah. kind of like um, if, if everything is doing, if if not everything, if everyone is doing something, Satan does something else. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of like that oppo that opposing point of view, and that that's what it always means to me. I mean, uh, awesome. besides that, you know, Satan embodies strength. Satan embodies you know individuality. Satan embodies you know lustful, carnal. Um, uh, indulgences. Um, there, are, there are a lot of different things that can be attributed to the idea of Satan. But mm. for me, so it's always like it's always been like that rebellious kind of um, teen kind of um, mentality. You know, I feel like I've always been kind of like stuck in my teenage years in a way. Like yeah. people ask me, like you know, like whoa what uh, decade do you belong to? And I'm like, the 80s, man, the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, wow. you know, that, that, yeah, you know, the, the, the youthful energy of like the that. Youth gone wild. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that, that, yeah. that energy that I, that was so prevalent in that time period, you know, and that sort of rebellious kind of feeling. That's, that's, I don't know, that's Satan to me. Yeah. So I got to say, this is our 10th episode and that was uh, the fourth favorite answer. It's awesome. it's in the top ten, definitely. <laughs> it is fourth. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad I made it to the top four. Yeah, 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 man. <laughs> no, that was awesome. All right. Well, that's gonna about do it then. Uh, thank you, Zoth, very much for being here and for yeah, hanging man. out with us. We oh, appreciate you're having very you. well. Thank you for having me on. I had a great time. Hell yeah. We, we must do it again. 
Let's. We we will. <laughs> we will. All right. Hail yeah. Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. So, that's it for episode ten. Oh, and, what an uh, episode! Some crazy shit, man. Uh, <laughs> we we just resolved the issue, I think, for yeah. now, anyways. I, with I the mean, Adam, at least the truth came out. It's a, I, you know everything comes out in the wash, I guess. And uh, yeah, and woof. Now we know why he hates marsupials. Yeah. Ooh. Wow, that was messed up, man. Definitely messed up. So, and then of course Zoth. That was a great oh, interview. Yeah. He's a cool dude, man. Metal. Yeah. Awesome. That's a good show. Absolutely. We will see you all next week. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan.